Hello, everyone. This is Armstrong Williams on the right side. Don't curse. Speak English. Virtuous society. Armstrong. I dare you to listen. Hello everyone and welcome to a, another edition of the Armstrong Williams Show. Thank you um, so much for joining us. It seems like... What is on everybody's mind today is the Middle East and the fact that we lost our ambassador. And people have been, well, the pundits, of course, who are just as liberal and as biased as the days are long, find themselves criticizing um, candidate Romney for criticizing President Obama's foreign policy, especially as it relates to the Middle East and um, Egypt and Libya and I actually thought Mr. Um, uh, oh, Romney was absolutely um, absolutely spot on in his um, criticism in his accuracy and I'm so glad to see that others have um, decided to constructively criticize this country for having no policy I mean why do we depose of Gaddafi in the first place? Why? Why was he deposed? And why did we depose the devil we knew with the devil we are getting to know? I mean, these people just don't like us. They just don't. Uh, and so the bottom line is, is that we abandoned Mubarak. And I know some people will say, well, they were violent and um, they lack um, humanitarian efforts towards their people. Well, you know what? The people themselves are violent. I mean, look how they killed the ambassador. I mean, when you're dealing with that kind of mentality, you need stronghold leadership to sort of keep that kind of that kind of citizenry under control. I'm sorry. I know you don't like it. It's just the way it is. I mean, it's almost barbaric. What else are you going to do? You got people um, um, decapitating people, cutting their heads off, and then placing the video up on the social networks. I mean, come on. you got to realize the mentality that we're dealing with. And so we are, we have not even seen the last of this. Um, we haven't. We haven't even seen the last of it. Um, we have witnessed over the last couple of days an attack on America's embassy in Libya that left four Americans dead. Um, um, the breach of our embassy and violent protests in Egypt and a subsequent political spat between the White House and Governor Romney. Romney blasted the Obama administration for taking an apologetic stance in the wake of the tax, pointing to a statement from the U.S. Embassy in Cairo that he described as akin to apology, and that's what it was. But in the back and forth over this sharp criticism of President Obama and the hubbub over State Department tweets that were later deleted, misses the larger point and an undeniable truth an undeniable truth America's mixed signals on the Middle East are continuing to have deadly consequences since the start of what was romantically termed the Arab Spring America has made wrong moves at least every turn that have weakened our standing in the world and sent mixed messages to allies and adversaries alike. It's indisputable. You cannot argue facts. As a result, the always volatile Middle East has experienced a rapid deterioration that has brought instability and bloodshed to the region on a scale not seen in decades. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Armstrong Williams as we continue in the midst of this presidential election. Now, every, every now and then, we try to sometimes get away from politics. You know, I was reading, I guess, Paul Lamar Hunter's story, and I, it was just so interesting, his quote from his mother saying he would never amount to anything in life. You know, it's sort of foreign to me, but I do know other 
people who are adults now who've said that their parents once told them they would never amount to anything. You know, I, I, you know, our guest is the 19th sibling of 21 brothers and sisters, and he is the first to graduate from college with a four-year degree. He wanted to be a good example for his kids. He believes that anything is possible if you work hard and set your mind to it. It is truly a Horatio Alta story, an American story. Uh, Hunter had just completed his book, No Love, No Charity, the success story of the 19th child, which is due out a week from tomorrow. It is about his life struggles and accomplishments, including being the first of 21 siblings to graduate from college. Let me welcome Paul to our airways. Paul, thank you for your book, and thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be on your show. Oh, boy. What kind of phone system are you on today? Oh, my goodness. What is your... You you can't hear me? Oh, the quality. What are you on? Are you on a cell phone? Sounds like you're in a tunnel. You on a cell phone? Yes. Can you hear me now? Uh, Is it possible you can hang up and call us back on a landline? Yes, yes, please, sir. Please I'll thank do it right you. Now. Please thank you. Um, All right, thank you. Yeah, so you know, you're gonna hear more from my guests when because my my um, engineer Anthony, too official. I do not want to hear his lip service about how bad the show sounded and how it was an editing nightmare for him, how he spent all these hours editing his show trying to make it sound good. So I'm going to deal with it at the beginning and not at the end of the show because it can be an editing nightmare. And sometimes we have to turn these shows around um, for... um, We have to turn these shows around to play back at 7 p.m. So I I, I, um, want to continue as we wait on our guests to um, call back on a landline, and he will. We're looking forward to a story. Can you imagine 21 siblings? You're number 19. It's, it's just it's amazing the circumstances that people evolve from and what they become. It lets you know that you can be anything that you set your mind to. Anything that you set your mind to you can become. And sometimes, you know, our struggles, our pitfalls, our setbacks are spiritual weightlifting. And let me welcome back our guest um, to the Armstrong Williams Show and his remarkable journey. Paul, thank you for calling back. Uh, A little better. So 19, your, your mother and father, the same mother, same father for all 21 kids? No, see, um, when my uh, dad met my mother, she already had three girls, and they went on and had 18. 18 more children together? Yes. Oh, my goodness. So they were active in their young days, as you can see. But you also, it's interesting, in your story, you talk about how incredibly successful your mother was a uh, Louise Hunter who was credited for helping thousands of men, women, and children through numerous charitable organizations she started over the years. Yes, she had um, ended up starting a um, homeless shelter, which was called Love and Charity Homeless Shelter. And that shelter is established in Racine, Wisconsin. And so in the process of starting that shelter, she was more focused on helping others instead of her own let me let me also say to my live stream and thank you so much i know you can't hear me again anthony just sent me a text telling me that there is something going on with my audio i think we had a little issue with the live stream you know it's been down for a few days and in his rush to come over to set it up, he forgot to um, turn on the audio. And let me just tell you, I'm not going to attempt to do it because I do not want to disrupt a shut down the show today because sometimes I can hit wrong buttons. So today I'm going to wait on the side of caution. I'm going to stick with what we have. Um, Paul, so what was it like growing up with 18 siblings, man? Well, you know what? It was it was it was great growing up with my siblings, but the most difficult part was trying to cultivate a relationship with my mom. That was difficult. You know, that's tough for me. You know, I almost 
wanted to edit it out of the introduction to you because that bothers me so much. What was the problem with mom? Well, and listen, see, what is um, all that? What I, is all that noise in the background, man? Are you are you working while you're talking to it? There's a lot of noise. No, no, no. I'm not working at all. I'm sitting down. But there's a lot of noise in the background. But go ahead. But see, um, the the relationship was um, it was it was it was sour between my mother and my um, siblings. We did not get along. Um, she was born in the '30s, and she believed in you know hard nose putting your kids down she was a she wasn't a woman that would want to build children up it was always tearing tearing us down no don't are you serious mama yes yes did it so, change you know in, in you know in 2000 and 2005 i graduated from gateway technical college with an associate's degree in supervisory uh, management and she had two tickets to come to my ceremony. She never showed up at all. So what I was able to do after I left the ceremony, I went over to her homeless shelter, which is in Racine, and it's called Love and Charity Homeless Shelter. I went over there to see why she did not make it. So um, one of the homeless guys indicated to me that she said that she wasn't going to go because she is... Um, she's more important to me. She don't care nothing about my two-year uh, degree. So I had asked him, I said, well, could you go upstairs? And hold, hold. Down? This is a tough story for me today because you're talking about mama. You're talking about your mama. We're coming back. Don't worry. You got to tell the truth and stay out of the church. Paul Lamar Hunter, don't go away. We'll be back. For more information on the Armstrong Williams Show, please visit our new website at www.rightsidewire.com. There you can find his syndicated column archive, view live streams, and get your favorite conservative pundits' views on the current issues affecting the American people. From building wealth to foreign policy, stay connected with Armstrong Williams and his colleagues at the all-new www.rightsidewire.com. High Point University has experienced unprecedented growth during the worst economic disruption in decades. This growth is driven by a university that focuses on holistic education, on experiential learning, and on values-based living. At High Point University, every student receives an extraordinary education in an inspiring environment with caring people. See what makes High Point University extraordinary at highpoint.edu. Anderson Brothers Bank, a family-owned and operated establishment that blends traditional personal service, local market awareness, and advanced technology to meet the financial needs of its customers. Visit abbank.com or call 843-464-6271 to see how they can assist you with your banking needs. Anderson Brothers Bank, celebrating 75 years of community banking, the way it should be. Stability right in your backyard since 1933. Join the millions of Americans who pursue one of our country's finest traditions, from hunting to sport shooting. Since 1871, the NRA has grown as a service organization involved in all aspects of shooting sports and is a proud defender of the Bill of Rights. Join today to begin taking advantage of exclusive membership offers and discounts, including up to $25,000 in insurance coverage. Contact the NRA today. Call 1-800-672-3888 or visit nra.org. Life is full of unexpected changes. Everyone has potential to do wrong. And when they choose to do it, contact the Buxell Group for your private investigation needs. TheBuxellGroup.com or by phone at 202-243-9746. Whether there's an instance of a cheating spouse, child custody, process service, or security, don't continue suspecting. Get closure so that you can move on with your life. Visit TheBuxellGroup.com now or call 202-243-9746 if you think it's happening. It probably is. Where heads of state, sports, entertainment, and political celebrities meet, you're listening to Armstrong Williams. So, Paul, what what, what is it that happened to your mother that made her so negative towards all of her children where they all had such a tough relationship with her? What happened? You know what? I've been trying to figure that out for for years. And... 
and I, 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 this is my assessment. I think that uh, her parents did not show her any affection or did not build her up when she was coming up, did not say anything um, positive to her. Now, she is the mother of 21 natural children, you know, 65 great um, grandchildren and um, 55 or more great grandchildren, but her family with her mom and dad, they weren't affectionate at all. Well, speaking I'm... with speaking with my aunt, and 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 so that carried on to you know the next generation. So when she started to have kids, that's the way she was toward us. Is your mother alive now? Yeah, she's alive. She's huh. seventy. She's seventy eight. Seventy eight years old. And hasn't but I want to get back to what I was telling you about. Um, when I had graduated in 2005 okay, from ahead, Gateway Technical ahead, College here in Racine. And like I indicated, that she did not show up to the ceremony. So I went over to the homeless shelter, and, and one of the homeless men there, one of the residents, went upstairs to get her, and I wanted to take pictures with her with my cap and gown, and I had my degree with me, but she refused to um, take pictures with me. And I talk about it in my book. No Love, No Charity, the success story of the 19th child. But um, I had to take pictures with the residents that was living there because she refused to take pictures with me. What about your father? How did he balance this out? Well, my father died when I was eight years old. He, he died in a car crash. Hmm. Well, listen, your mother at 78 years old is still the same way she's had to change. No, she still she still she is still the same um, lady that doesn't want to see her kids um, succeed at all. That's why you know when I took pictures with the homeless people, she went upstairs, and then I went upstairs to go see her to tell her that I'm leaving, and she said that she wanted to give me some advice, and she, and these words stayed with stayed it stayed in my mind. She said to me, she said, "Son, a child is not supposed to be successful in life." until the parents are deceased. And that blew me away. I was taken aback by that statement. What? Yes. Yeah. like a foreign conversation to me. Yes, yes. That's why, you know, uh, I was able to go to school and get my bachelor's degree. I graduated from a great school up at Iowa University, and I have my bachelor's degree in business administration. In the process of going to school, I was uh, working on my book. Uh, my book is completed. It will be in bookstores on Friday, September 21st, No Love, No Charity, The Success Story of the 19th Child. And your audience can go to the website. The website is nolovenocharity.com. There has to be at least one or 21 of the 21 kids that she has some kind of a special relationship with. None. None whatsoever. That's almost impossible, she, Paul. It, 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 it's the truth. If you talk with a lot of, if you talk to some of my siblings, they will tell you the truth. What about with her grandchildren? She has three grandchildren that she show favor, favoritism toward. She would do anything for three particular grandchildren, and that's it. What separates them from everyone else? I I don't understand. I don't know, and I don't understand. For for some particular reason, she has three favorites that she just adore, that she would do anything for. Are they all girls, all boys mixed? Um, it's one grandchild and two great-grandchildren. And if you say anything negative about them, she would get very upset because she doesn't see them doing any wrong whatsoever. Are they the older grands or the younger grands? They're the younger. Younger. They like, um, I would say, 26 and 21 and 20. And they're close to their grandmother? They're not even close with her, but she uh, just, she loves uh, them to death. Uh, but they're not close to her. <laughs> This is a strange conversation. It is. It's, this it's, is not it's making strange. any sense. That's why, that's why a lot of people need to go out next Friday and get the book No Love, No Charity, The Success Story of the 19th Child. They can also go to the website, nolovenocharity.com. But you love your mother. I, 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 love, my, I love my mom to death, 
but there are certain things that you do not do to your children. I have four children myself that I would not do. One thing I would not do is put my children down. I would never tell them they'll never amount to anything. I want my I want my four children to be better than me, to accomplish more than what I had accomplished. And your mother has sisters. Does she get along with her sisters? No, she does not get along with her sister. Is she, she has o- two living sisters um, today, and she doesn't get along with them. Is she the oldest? Yes, yeah, she's the oldest right now. Did she ever remarry? She has been remarried four times, and she has a she has a strange relationship right now with her current husband because she lives in Racine, he lives in in Memphis, Tennessee. So it's a bizarre relationship with that. Well, tell me the good things about your mother. It's got to be something good. You know what? When she first started off, you know, um, helping the the homeless people, it was it was great, but. You have to have balance in your life. You have to understand that family comes first, and you cannot spend time away from your family, and you want to always be at the shelter. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a pretty big, you know, um, athletic guy, and I always, a lot of my siblings always wanted to play sports. She would not allow us to play sports because she would say, I can't take you to the doctor to get a physical because I have to do the Lord's will. Everything that she said, it, I have to do the Lord's will. I have to do the Lord's will. But now that I'm older, no, you did not have to do the Lord's will. You were doing your own will. No relation. How many daughters? She, my, she, there's 11, 11 girls, and there's eight boys. Um, there's 10 girls living today, and there's eight boys. There's 18 of us today. Wow. And what's the age ranges from the youngest to the oldest? Um, the youngest is my baby sister. She is 39. And the oldest is 56 or 57. It really, Her name is Elizabeth Carey Strong. It has to really impact children in a very devastating way when they're so disconnected from their mother in that way. Yes, yes. And, and, and I can tell you this, that I am totally disconnected, you know, with her. You know, we, we, can't, sit, we can't sit and have a conversation at all. We just can't sit and have a conversation. I can't go and pick her up and say, hey, let's go out and let me treat you for dinner or let's go for a walk like normal, typical, healthy family do. What is her reaction? Oh, oh, no, she doesn't. She doesn't do that with her kids. This I've never heard of anything like this, man. This is something like out of some other planet, some other planet. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So it's a it's a it's a. But why would she have all these kids if she could, we're not going to have this connection with them? Was she a good mother? I don't know why. Was she a good mother? Really, Was she a good provider? I don't know why she had all of us. And, but you know what? It's a blessing that I'm here because if she wouldn't have me, I wouldn't be able to write the book. So you should have called this book Mommy Dearest. <laughs> I call it No Love, No Charity. The success story of the 19 child because, see, she has a homeless shelter here in the city of Racine, Wisconsin, which is called Love and Charity. And so it's supposed to display love and charity. Does you she, walk into the doors, what, but so it what, does not. So what happens when your mother... any love or, or any charity whatsoever. What has happened over the years when your mother's become ill or has setbacks and she needs her children? Are you guys there for her? Um, could you repeat that again? What about over the years if your mother, when your mother was ill or had setbacks and she needed her children, were you there for her and did she accept it? I, you know what? It was um, three months ago she got, she got ill. She had a bladder inf- infection. She had, a, um, um, she had a blood clot in her leg. Also, she had something that was wrong with her heart, and she had to be hospitalized. They wanted, the doctors wanted to keep her there for um, at least about three months, but she refused. So she stayed there for about a week. And so I remember that, you know, I didn't want to get up in the morning and go visit her in the hospital. I just didn't want to do that because something in my spirit, my intuition told me that if you go, you know she doesn't like you and she's going to accuse you of doing something. 
So what I decided to do was I had I had my smartphone. I went I went to the hospital to go visit her, and I hit my recorder on my smartphone. And so I just recorded a conversation that the doctor was telling me what was wrong with my mom. And so my mom went back and told a lot of my siblings that I told the doctor that she was crazy to put her in the old folks' home and that uh, she's incompetent. And so a lot of my siblings did not believe it, but some of them did believe it. And it, it caused a divide in the family. Did Paul say it? Some people say, yeah, Paul said it. Yeah, yeah, I think Paul said it. But then when I had showed them my smartphone and played the recording, what the doctor had said, they were shocked. So, you know, what, what, what my mom tried to do, she tried to divide um, siblings against each other. She's a divider. She's not a uniter. Does she go to church? Yeah, she, 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 you know, she, she claims to be a Christian. And that's what Christian, you know, that's why, you know, I have a hard time with, with um, Christian people telling me, well, I'm a Christian. Look, man, how can I'm someone get the book? Oh, okay. how, how can someone get the book? What'd you say? How can someone get your book? They can, they can get the book next Friday. They can get the book at any bookstore next Friday. No love, no charity. The success story of the 19 child. For more information on the Armstrong Williams Show, please visit our new website at www.rightsidewire.com. There you can find his syndicated column archive, view live streams, and get your favorite conservative pundits' views on the current issues affecting the American people. From building wealth to foreign policy, stay connected with Armstrong Williams and his colleagues at the all-new www.rightsidewire.com. America must change course if we hope to survive and save the American dream for our children and grandchildren. How do we fix Social Security and Medicare? How do we cut government spending? How do we reform health care? How do we simplify the tax code? The Heritage Foundation has a bold plan that tackles these tough problems using common sense solutions that leave partisan politics on the sidelines. Find out how we can save the American dream at savingthedream.org. Paid for by the Heritage Foundation. Hi, this is Armstrong Williams with an opportunity to own a piece of paradise in Nassau, Bahamas. Spectacular land prices. 8,000 square feet, 20,000 square feet lot. Affordable prices. Hilltop properties with views of the magnificent sea. Just call 242-677-3120 or 3121 or go to info at rightsidewire.com and leave your information. Does your school, team, church, or charity need a new fundraiser? Do you need to work out of your home or part-time? Are you a small business that can use an additional revenue stream? Then you need Yellow Llama. Do you need affordable web services or tools to enhance your existing business? Are you a graphic artist who wants to create a revenue stream with your art but not get ripped off? Then go to www.yellowlama.com. Join the millions of Americans who pursue one of our country's finest traditions, from hunting to sports shooting. Since 1871, the NRA has grown as a service organization involved in all aspects of shooting sports and is a proud defender of the Bill of Rights. Join today to begin taking advantage of exclusive membership offers and discounts, including up to $25,000 in insurance coverage. Contact the NRA today. Call 1-800-672-3888 or visit nra.org. Where heads of state, sports, entertainment, and political celebrities meet. You're listening to Armstrong Williams. Uh, Michael Cutler, I'm going to take you off subject, for at least for a segment today. I, I just, I'm just curious with the vast amount of experience and insight and the contact that you have. I mean, what is your reaction to the snub in uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, the craziness with the fact that we um, deposed of um, Gaddafi and we replaced him with something far worse and we were always there we financed it and all of a sudden the ambassadors running around on 9-11 thinking everything is hunkered door and we're going to sing Kumbaya and 
they killed him and they treated him like that, worse than an animal. And then Egypt on 9-11, where it just disrupted. None of this would have happened had we not forced the oust of Mubarak and the deposing of Gaddafi. What, what, what comes to mind? And welcome to the show. I'm strong. Hi. I, I can barely hear you. I don't know if it's at your end or my end, and I'm so sorry to do that to you. You didn't hear me? I did not. Now I'm hearing you a little bit better. I think we have a bad connection. No, I'm so sorry, I and I know you. you I, I'm, just, I, I'm just interested in your thoughts on what's going on with Gaddafi, the stub, snubbing of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, um, the fact that we supported the Alstom Mubarak, we deposed uh, Gaddafi, and look at what we left the region with. Yes, no, you're right. It's very disturbing. Um, it, it's so difficult for me. And by the way, thank you so much for having me on the program, Armstrong. You do a great job of covering so many topics that aren't being properly covered by so many of the programs out there. Uh, you know, one of the things that really concerns me is that Israel is America's closest ally. Uh, you know, as an immigration agent, I worked with a number of foreign governments. I don't know of any government that was more eager, ready, willing, and able to help America with a bunch of issues, especially where law enforcement and national security was concerned, than the government of Israel. I worked with them for almost uh, 26 years. And what is happening to me is incomprehensible. And what's being left out from all of the discussions about the tragic murder of our ambassador and three other State Department employees in Libya, including a couple of what are known as RSOs, resident security officers, is that we saw this sort of thing happen before the 1993 terrorist attack at the World Trade Center. If we go into our little time machine and look back to 1993, what happened before the World Trade Center was attacked was that there were two attacks at American embassies in Africa, and then there was an attack that killed sailors on the USS Cole. Uh, we're watching the heat roiling up uh, in, in the Middle East right now. That's not to say all Libyans are our enemies. The Fox News was making a very clear point about how many uh, Libyans are furious at the murder of our ambassador. But nevertheless, this does have the fingerprints of al-Qaeda. We live in a dangerous era. We know that Iran certainly has nuclear aspirations, and it's not just to put their street lights on uh, with the warmth of nuclear radiation running the generating stations. And the United States, incredibly, is not sending, I believe, a clear message to Iran or anybody else in the Middle East of our resolve to stand, number one, by Israel, and number two, to protect our own nation against those who would come to America and wreak havoc upon us. And this isn't about being xenophobic, Armstrong. You know, it's so astonishing to me that if you dare speak out, as I often do, about the need to enforce immigration laws. This isn't about bigotry. The immigration laws don't distinguish people by race, religion, or any other way, but rather by keeping people out who would be harmful to us. We now have millions of foreign nationals scattered across America. We have no record of their entry. We have no reliable way of knowing their names or their nationalities, and therefore we certainly have no inkling as to why they're here in the first place. I am fearful that this nonsense has left us vulnerable on the one hand, and on the other hand, uh, Israel almost seems to have been cast adrift by this country. Am I getting any of that wrong in your judgment, Armstrong? No. I, and listen, uh, we really, there's so much uncertainty, and we really have no policy. I mean, how could you not even think about your ambassadors in that region on the commemorating the anniversary of 9 11? Are you kidding me? It's astonishing. It's astonishing. And I have to tell you that uh, and I was watching Karl Rove, and I don't always agree with Karl Rove. You know, I'm registered as a Democrat, but first and foremost, we are all Americans before we're anything else. And I agree with his criticism that the president went off to a fundraiser in Las Vegas hours after our ambassador was slaughtered. Uh, and, you know, I understand the politics. It's election year. They need the money. The president certainly could have made arrangements to have done, in my mind, a remote conference with the people at that event in Las Vegas, spoken to them by big screen TV, whatever the technology is there, and say, look, I wish I could join you, but before I worry about keeping my job, I must live up to my oath of office and do my job. Our ambassador and three other people were just killed. I'm in Washington taking care of business. What would have been inappropriate about that, Armstrong? 
um, he left it to someone else. Well, you know, uh, a, a, a situation of this magnitude cannot be delegated, at least in my judgment, to somebody else. At some point, the, the commander-in-chief needs to step up and say, you know something, job one is to do my job. I understand that he wants to be reelected. That anybody in his position would most likely want to be. But job one is to coordinate the efforts to make certain that the intelligence was being followed and that the best decisions were being made. And yes, I know he has communications gear on board Air Force One. It's a flying White House, they tell us. But in point of fact, there's a world of difference between being on Air Force One and being in the White House where he can be uh, focused completely on the task at hand. And boy, if this can't get your attention, what can get your attention? You know, he snubbed um, Netanyahu because Netanyahu refuses to take his position on Iran. They don't want any barriers. They just want him to support their position on Iran hook, line, and sinker, even if it's at the cost of their existence. <coughs> well, you know, Netanyahu has really got to be concerned, and I think the citizens of Israel have got to be concerned, that, you know, there is no space between, there should be no space between the United States and Israel, and it seems as though there's a Grand Canyon there. And, and what does it tell the enemies of Israel? What does it tell Iran? You know, I don't think Israel, with their great military prowess and their assets and resources, are nearly as capable as is the United States. I mean, we are the superpower, and that's the reality. So what does this tell Iran about America's resolve to go after Iran if Israel decides that there's no alternative but to, to take military action? And, and, you know, here's the other, and I know we keep coming back to immigration, but we have to. Because what I want your listeners to understand, is, as I've often pointed out, immigration is not a single but rather a singular issue, and its goal is to protect American lives and American jobs. So my point is this. We know that Iran has been moving more and more of their shock troops, the so-called CUDs, to Venezuela. Uh, we know that there are terrorist training camps in the tri-border region of Brazil, Hamas, Hezbollah, and Al-Qaeda, and Hezbollah is actually the client of Iran. So with all of these folks having the capability to easily enter the United States by falsely identifying themselves as being Latinos, because, again, if somebody from the Middle East lives in Latin America for enough years, picks up the language, immerses themselves in the culture, it's very easy for Muhammad to successfully claim to be Miguel. Uh, and, you know, I can tell you from 30 years of experience as an immigration officer, you cannot sit across the table from another human being and immediately, by looking into their eyes, mystically, you know, like the mighty Karnak, determine who that person is or even what his or her nationality is. So there's only one reason that makes sense for Iran to position their shock troops in Venezuela. And really, I see it as a dagger pointed directly at the United States of America. And we know that Iran, and I don't think that they're just bluffing, has said that if Israel attacks Iran, they will treat it as though America was attacking Iran and take retribution against the United States. Well, if this was a chess game, they've moved all their appropriate pieces into the right squares on the chessboard so that they are now in the position to make good on that threat. Uh, it, it will not be a threat. It will be a promise. So put all those pieces together. Deterrence is done when you convince your adversary that you are ready, willing, and able to strike and carry out that which you threaten to do. What are we exactly telling Iran with all of these actions? You know, there's so reminiscent of some of the days of former President Jimmy Carter. You know, one of the things we want to do when we come back in the last segment of the show, we've got to talk about immigration. Uh, obviously, you have to be highly disappointed that now the campaign is really dealing with the immigration issue. Michael? Does it sadden you that neither side is addressing immigration? Um, that it's just this issue is sitting on the sideline. And for those of you that are just listening for the first time or may not be familiar with Michael Cutler, Michael is a fellow at the Center for Immigration Studies and advisor to the 9-11 Families for a Secure America. 
and a consultant retired in 2002 after a distinguished career with the INS of over 30 years, including 26 as a special agent. In 1991, he was promoted to the position of senior special agent and was assigned to the Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force and worked with members of other federal and state law enforcement agencies as well as law enforcement organizations of other countries. He's a frequent guest on O'Reilly Factor, O'Reilly No Spin, Lou Dobbs Tonight, and CNN. You know, we're streaming live um, at www.livestream.com forward slash Armstrong Williams, and you can also email us at info at rightsidewire.com. You can also read my weekly columns every Monday in the A section of the Washington Times. You can go to washingtontimes.com on Monday. And you can also read my daily blog in the Hill. That's the Hill.com and just click on Pundit's blog. It's P-U-N-D-I-T-S Pundit's blog. It will be back. For more information on the Armstrong Williams Show, please visit our new website at www.rightsidewire.com. There you can find his syndicated column archive, view live streams, and get your favorite conservative pundits' views on the current issues affecting the American people. From building wealth to foreign policy, stay connected with Armstrong Williams and his colleagues at the all-new www.rightsidewire.com. Anderson Brothers Bank, a family-owned and operated establishment that blends traditional personal service, local market awareness, and advanced technology to meet the financial needs of its customers. Visit abbank.com or call 843-464-6271 to see how they can assist you with your banking needs. Anderson Brothers Bank, celebrating 75 years of community banking, the way it should be. Stability right in your backyard since 1933. High Point University has experienced unprecedented growth during the worst economic disruption in decades. This growth is driven by a university that focuses on holistic education, on experiential learning, and on values-based living. At High Point University, every student receives an extraordinary education in an inspiring environment with caring people. See what makes High Point University extraordinary at highpoint.edu. Whether it's their impact on prison guards, law enforcement officials, business executives, employees, or marriage and relationships, Lorette is dedicated to changing the individual and institutions around the globe. Lorette's diverse network and training courses can help provide you with the tools you need to both wisely and confidently lead, manage, and supervise yourself as well as others. Lorette Business Network, a proven system for achieving success in your business and life. Please visit their website and begin this life-lasting journey with Lorette today, www.lorette.org. To travelers along the road of life who have fallen asleep at the wheel, to the many who woke up in time to avert disaster and get back on the righteous path. For the ones who crashed and survived and now adhere vigilantly to a virtuous and righteous path. Finally, Armstrong Williams' much-anticipated new book, Reawakening Virtues, gives his insights into these daily challenges and much more. Reawakening Virtues is available in bookstores and at Amazon.com. Where heads of state, sports, entertainment, and political celebrities meet. You're listening to Armstrong Williams. And welcome back. Michael Cutler, are you there? Michael. This is strange. Did he hit his mute button or something? Uh, But anyhow, our phone lines are open at 733-5620-1866-620-6620. Um, give us a buzz here on the Armstrong Williams Show on phone lines. What, what are your thoughts on the situation in um, the Middle East? Um, how do you think it should be resolved? Uh, I, I think many of you would agree with me on the fact that we definitely should not have invaded a sovereign state. Remember, President Obama said during the time Bush went into Iraq, we have no right. Yeah, we and said we have no right to um, invade Iraq. And look at what what he's done. He's done the same in Libya. Michael Cutler, so I see you're back. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks, Armstrong. 
Uh, yeah, we're having a little bit of a sound problem, but I hear you now. It's kind of spotty. I apologize. Uh, you know, look, America's sovereignty should be inviolate. And what this administration has seemed to have forgotten, and i got to tell you, though, even with George W. Bush, I mean, let's be fair about it. We sent Border Patrol agents to secure the Iraqi border against insurgents and terrorists and left our own border unguarded. This drive for, for, for commerce and trade and all this other business is a, is a wonderful thing, but not where you endanger your safety and your security. And the idea that now the president has embarked on this program that he said is his own version of the DREAM Act, uh, because purportedly Congress didn't act. You know, I wrote a commentary for Fox News Latino where I came to call uh, the president's use of prosecutorial discretion, as he claimed. Uh, I called it prosecutorial deception. The immigration laws are supposed to protect us. And if you wind up giving millions of illegal aliens official identity documents without being able to verify who they are, then, you know, Al-Qaeda should give you the MVP award. We saw that with the attacks of 1993 and again in 2001. And we just, of course, commemorated the 11th anniversary of 9-11. And the 9-11 Commission found that this was a major problem. In fact, as you know, Armstrong, I provided testimony to the 9-11 Commission. And in fact, if you go to my website, michaelcutler.net or uh, talkborder.com, and of course I write for CAPS, capsweb.org, I've been putting articles out there about how what we're doing now flies in the face of the recommendations and findings of the 9-11 Commission. And what keeps me awake at night, and in fact, last uh, yesterday I was in Washington, uh, Congressman Lou Barletta invited me to address members of the, um, of the Freshman Immigration Reform Caucus. My concern, as I said earlier in your program, is that if you look at what's happening with all of the violence bringing up in the Middle East, embassies across the Middle East are coming under attack. This is the sort of thing that happened before the 93 attacks. This isn't about being mean-spirited to kids, as the president would have us believe. It's not even about children. You know, he kept saying, well, I'm doing this for the kids, the young people. The age cutoff is 31. Now I'm on the wrong side of 60, so 31 sounds kind of young to me, but I don't know of any society that would declare a young person to be 31 years of age. So the idea that we're doing this and in a way that will have no integrity, there will be no face-to-face -face interviews, there will be no way of verifying information because they don't have the resources to conduct any field investigations so that any alien who runs the border and comes up with a bogus uh, transcript of a high school uh, anywhere in the country can falsely identify himself as being the person named in that transcript and qualified to participate in this wacky program. And once they do this program, they will get a document that, in the parlance of law enforcement, is a breeder document. The document that ICE, or USCIS Citizenship and Immigration Services, will give to these aliens will enable them to immediately get driver's licenses, social security cards, credit cards, library cards. And library cards are an issue because we know in the past the terrorists use computers at libraries to communicate covertly. So this is a system that is being put into place that directly challenges and undermines national security. And by the way, as an added bonus, and I say this with a lot of sarcasm and my tongue buried firmly in my cheek, this will also create millions of new authorized workers who are competing with American workers for precious jobs. Paul Volcker is talking about buying up all the Treasury notes and we're going to keep the interest rates low and all this other business, but you know they still can't seem to generate jobs. Well, not only aren't we generating jobs, the president, through this policy, will provide millions of lawful competitors among illegal aliens for Americans and lawful immigrants. And by the way, these aliens who benefit from this program will have as much right to a job in America as do you or I. Now, what sense does that make at a time that we worry about who's here, why they're here, and how do we get Americans back to work? Is there anything here that you would take issue with, Armstrong? You know, I, I have to tell you, um, it just seems like a lot of inherent conflict. Sometimes the left doesn't know what the right is doing. And when you're not operating on principle and political expediency, any road will take you where you're going. But, you know... 
this talk about political expediency. Uh, this is like this, and we've, we've had this conversation, and I know that I'm preaching to the choir. I know that we stand together, I believe, on this issue, Armstrong. But we hear about this mythical Latino vote. Uh, to me, and I believe to you, this is an insidious form of profiling, how anybody could look at someone's skin color, be it brown, black, yellow, white, purple, polka dot, whatever, and prognosticate who that person is going to vote for is profiling. And it makes absolutely no sense to presume, and, I, and I've done a lot of speaking engagements around the country, and so many Americans who happen to be uh, of Latino ethnicity have come up to me and agreed with me. Why on earth would any American of any flavor be happy that we're going to allow into our country God knows how many millions of illegal aliens without knowing who they are so that they can compete with us for jobs and possibly be criminals? If you look at the violence that plays out on streets across America, look at what's going on in Chicago. There was a disturbing report uh, two weeks ago, CBS News, Scott Pelley on the Evening News reported how parts of Chicago, according to Jack Riley, the SAC, the special agent in charge of DEA in Chicago, said that there are towns in Chicago, neighborhoods in Chicago, that resemble Mexican border towns in terms of violence. Who's perpetrating the violence? Members of the Mexican cartels who are having gun battles in the street. It sounds similar to what you've seen in Ciudad Juarez, the most violent city in the entire Western Hemisphere, uh, having gun battles in Chicago for control of turf. We have Janet Napolitano telling us the borders have never been more secure, border patrol arrests are down, nobody is coming. The real metric, Armstrong, as to whether or not our borders are secure have nothing to do with what I believe are doctored um, border patrol arrest reports. Those statistics are as worthless as the Enron uh, sheets about their profitability. The real metric is the flow of drugs into our country, because if the borders were secured, cocaine and heroin could not make their way into the United States. Those two poisons are purely produced outside the United States. For them to get here, they have to cross our border, whether it's at the Mexican border, the Canadian border, a seaport, or an international airport, which, by the way, is why I've said that every state is a border state. So if the drugs are still pouring into America, that border is not secure. But remarkably, remarkably, while all of the focus is on too much salt and sugar in our diet, there hasn't been a single commercial in years warning people about the dangers of ingesting cocaine, heroin, crack, and those other poisons, and the money, and it's tens of billions of dollars a year, are flowing out of our economy and directly into the coffers of the Mexican drug cartels, transnational gangs, and terrorist organizations, um, such as the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, and so forth. And most of our crime is directly or indirectly related to the drug trade. How on earth does our government claim the border is secure and not go after the demand for narcotics that's poisoning us and endangering our lives from so many different directions, Armstrong? Where do you think it will all leave? Randy, you have a comment before. Uh, quickly, Randy, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Yeah, how you fellas doing, man? Just fine, uh, thank you. Doing first great, Randy. Thank you for the call. How you doing? First thing first, we're a nation of immigrants, and we got to do something about the problem. And when, the, when the Bush administration had the, the Senate, and they had the, um, the Congress for six years, they did nothing. Obama did something to, to help the kids that they, their parents got here, and they were children when they came here. They, you know, they didn't sneak in there. They, he's not giving amnesty to the parents. Reagan gave amnesty to, to over 20, well, I mean, what, about 20 million immigrants. Back in the 80s, nobody said nothing. His wife was saying, just, and you're talking about the drug war, his wife was saying, just say no to drugs while him and Bush... Him and his vice president Bush was, was doing Iran Contra, helping drugs get in our country. Nobody said nothing. This is just another red herring y'all tossing up because there's this little unrest and, um, and, 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 and the thing going on with Romney. Y'all should be talking about why Romney is, is disrespecting our president, our country, and the fallen and, and, um, and that, and that um, embassy or that consulate. Nobody well, said I, 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 I can't I, I, I speak for Mr. I'm not hearing y'all talk about that. Y'all talking about the, the immigration and the border? Uh, Obama has made more arrests and deportations than Bush did in eight years. That's not true, yes, and I'll tell you why it isn't. Huh? No, wait, Randy, I'll tell you why that's not the case. First that of all, the, the Reagan amnesty involved close to 4 million people. They had promised us that it would involve a little over 1 million. We wound up with four times as many. It was a terrible disaster. It was a mistake. It never should have been done. 
But I have to tell you, let me just make a point, Randy. When, When the president said Congress failed to act and that's why he did this, that was dead wrong. In fact, I testified before Congress. I, I testified before four congressional hearings: three in the Senate, one in the House, one in the Senate, four in the House, about comprehensive reform. Congress did act. They acted to vote down bad legislation. I came to call comprehensive immigration reform the Terrorist Assistance and Facilitation Act for the very same reason that I imposed what the president Marcus does Cutler, now. The problem of immigration is created by both parties. It's not one party over the other. Rubio said he said something about it. Got a signal Rubio's brand. Rubio's brand never came to fruition. All you have to do is shoot the can down the road, man. High Point University has experienced unprecedented growth during the worst economic disruption in decades. This growth is driven by a university that focuses on holistic education, on experiential learning, and on values-based living. At High Point University, every student receives an extraordinary education in an inspiring environment with caring people. See what makes High Point University extraordinary at highpoint.edu. Join the millions of Americans who pursue one of our country's finest traditions, from hunting to sports shooting. Since 1871, the NRA has grown as a service organization involved in all aspects of shooting sports and is a proud defender of the Bill of Rights. Join today to begin taking advantage of exclusive membership offers and discounts, including up to $25,000 in insurance coverage. Contact the NRA today. Call 1-800-672-3888 or visit nra.org. Anderson Brothers Bank, a family-owned and operated establishment that blends traditional personal service, local market awareness, and advanced technology to meet the financial needs of its customers. Visit abbank.com or call 843-464-6271 to see how they can assist you with your banking needs. Anderson Brothers Bank, celebrating 75 years of community banking, the way it should be. Stability right in your backyard since 1933. Life is full of unexpected changes. Everyone has potential to do wrong. And when they choose to do it, contact the Buxell Group for your private investigation needs. TheBuxellGroup.com or by phone at 202-243-9746. Whether there's an instance of a cheating spouse, child custody, process service, or security, don't continue suspecting. Get closure so that you can move on with your life. Visit TheBuxellGroup.com now or call 202-243-9746 if you think it's happening. It probably is. America must change course if we hope to survive and save the American dream for our children and grandchildren. How do we fix Social Security and Medicare? How do we cut government spending? How do we reform health care? How do we simplify the tax code? The Heritage Foundation has a bold plan that tackles these tough problems using common sense solutions that leave partisan politics on the sidelines. Find out how we can save the American dream at savingthedream.org. Paid for by the Heritage Foundation. Does your school, team, church, or charity need a new fundraiser? Do you need to work out of your home or part-time? Are you a small business that can use an additional revenue stream? Then you need Yellow Llama. Do you need affordable web services or tools to enhance your existing business? Are you a graphic artist who wants to create a revenue stream with your art but not get ripped off? Then go to www.yellowlama.com. 